how you're on the Science Bus YouTube channel. I'm sort of sitting here talking to myself, as usual. It's the only decent conversation I can get half the time. Uh, I've had a few people in the last half hour asking me about respiration, saying they'd really like a short film on, on respiration. So here it is. You need to know that respiration happens in the mitochondria of all living cells. So if something isn't carrying out respiration, no matter how alive it might seem, it isn't alive. It has to carry out respiration. And that's because it's one of the seven life processes. It's a chemical reaction and it releases carbon dioxide, which turns lime water milky. That's the chemical test. You bubble carbon dioxide through lime water and it turns milky and it produces water. So water, there are two tests you need to know. The test for water with copper sulfate is you use anhydrous, that means without water, anhydrous copper sulfate, which is white, and that will turn blue. And you can use anhydrous cobalt chloride, which is normally blue. And when you add water, it turns pink. Cobalt chloride is falling out of favor a bit because it's really quite unpleasant stuff. Remember that respiration is an exothermic reaction, so it gives out heat. If you place your hands, not quite on your, on your face, but just maybe a millimeter or two away from your face, so to sort of frame your face with your hands, you might be able to feel the heat that's actually coming off your face. Crumbs, I'm boiling. Now remember, respiration is a way of releasing chemical energy from food. It's how energy is released from your food. You might want to uh, pause this for a minute and write some of it down. I'm about to change the, uh, the scrunched up piece of paper in front of me. So there are two types of respiration. And the first we're going to look at is aerobic respiration, which often goes by just the straight term respiration. But this is, strictly speaking, aerobic respiration. So in aerobic respiration, glucose is reacted with oxygen and it releases carbon dioxide and water. So glucose and oxygen are the reactants and the products, the things that are made, are carbon dioxide and water. And some energy is released too, but energy isn't a chemical, so we don't write it down here in this, this chemical reaction. You may have noticed already, or in the past, that respiration and photosynthesis are actually mirror images of each other. You see that the same things are used in the opposite direction. So respiration is releasing energy. Photosynthesis is capturing energy from the light just there. And it's sticking the water and the carbon dioxide together. Use a bit of chlorophyll to help that happen. Capturing that energy from the light to make oxygen and glucose again. So that's aerobic respiration. The last one of these, I won't call them slides because they're, they're not good enough to call them slides. The last of these scrumpled bits of paper is anaerobic respiration. And this one's quite, quite interesting. So funny stuff happens here. An means without, so it's without oxygen. And this can only be sustained for a short period of time by most organisms. Some organisms do it for their entire lives. They'll live happily often inside another organism or in the bottom of a muddy pond or somewhere. Uh, and they'll take glucose and they will break it down. They decompose it to form lactic acid. And when that happens inside your body, maybe you're running really hard, you're, you might be doing I don't know, a, a cross country run or playing some sports or goodness only knows what you're up to in your own free time. You might occasionally find, if you're working really hard, that your muscles start to seize up. So it starts to actually burn if you really, really work hard. That's because the lactic acid's building up in your muscles. It's actually building up in your tissues. The concentration's increasing. And to get rid of the lactic acid so that it stops hurting and so that your muscles start to work properly again, you need to take on some oxygen. So we call this lactic acid in your muscles. We, we refer to it as being an oxygen debt. So you carry out anaerobic respiration by working really hard. You're using energy faster than you can release it by aerobic respiration. So you use this emergency form of respiration. It's like an overdrive form of respiration. It can't be sustained for a very long time. And you pay off this oxygen debt by breathing and absorbing oxygen. And that breaks the lactic acid down by reacting it with oxygen, releasing carbon dioxide and water. So in truth, you can look at anaerobic respiration as, heart, as going halfway through aerobic respiration. If you think that if you, were, you take this part out there, glucose plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water. If you don't have enough oxygen, you can't do the rest of it, but your body's still able to release 
energy and to produce some lactic acid. You've got to get rid of that lactic acid, remember, so the lactic acid is released with oxygen and then is in there and then releases some carbon dioxide and some water. This has been very quick, it's been very rough, but hopefully, hopefully this has cleared some of this up for some of you. And if not, I'm not going to apologise because uh, I just, anyway, hope you have fun. Bye.